Hey everybody, welcome back to the Pardonable Podcast. I'm your host, David Lilly, and this is episode 50. We finally made it. Um, it's been like three years I've been doing this podcast, g- going on four, uh, going on four years, and we're finally getting to episode 50. Um, you know, uh, slow and steady wins the race, I guess. Um, but it's it's fine. It's all quality. We're about, over here at Pardon Will Podcast, we're about quality, not quantity. So hope you've enjoyed the ride so far. Um, this is a, a very special episode because it's just me. So what you're getting is full on rants. Um, there's rants galore. But not only that, if you can, I mean, I probably look just as awful as I normally do. But um, this is actually a morning episode. I never do morning episodes, um, but just had a little bit of extra time this morning. And I was like, you know what? I haven't talked about Mandalorian in a minute. I've got a few other things on my mind that I don't know if I'll always get to when I have guests. So I was like, well, why don't I just make an episode, special episode 50, just us hanging out, um, just to keep you company this week, <clears throat> give you some a few thoughts. Nothing crazy about Mandalorian that I think so far. I'll give you a few thoughts on that and then talk about some of the other conversations that I've had this week. And some of the things I'm thinking about doing with the podcast, really with with all the other stuff that I'm involved in, like my art. But anyway, thanks for listening. Um, so let's get right into it. Mandalorian. We are all the way. I don't even know what episode we're at this point in time, but I know we have two more left. And so I haven't talked. I think the first time I did a pop, and this won't be a pop art review because I'm going to talk about a whole bunch of stuff. Plus, I don't know if I have a ton on Mandalorian because, unfortunately, not a lot of to write home about um you got some cameos you got kind of a story moving along i don't know how you guys have felt about mandalorian it's fun the visuals are fun um you're kind of not really getting much out of uh the mandalorian himself um and they're not really doing like overly cute stuff with baby yoda grogu uh really what it feels like is and not only that let's just jump right in it's not only that i don't even know who a bad guy is in this thing what are they fighting against? I know they're trying to take back Mandalore, which are kind of like, well, the city, the, the whole country, basically planets burned up, which is cool. That's fun. They're trying to unite the Mandalorians. To what end? To take back the planet? Okay, fair enough. Uh, we we right off the bat got the Mythosaur. Everybody's stoked. Like, what's going to happen? This is great. And then it was just like, let's uh, let's kind of hang out with the Mandalorians. Let's kind of go to this. Let's go to this planet. Try to find some more, maybe um moff grand moff tarkin uh, um uh gideon tarkin grand moff tarkin that's my old school coming through gideon's out there somewhere he's uh you know and not to say i'm disappointed i mean they don't have to make mandalorian shows but they were doing so good and and this season just kind of seems like it's not it's not really delivering even like the the before when they were just going to planet to planet, he was kind of on a bigger quest, but he has to do all these small quests in between. Even that was kind of cool because you're like, oh, it's a cool new planet and this is what's going on. And it just kind of feels like it's dead in the water right now. Um, but we have two episodes left. Hopefully they pick it up. Um, hopefully. And hopefully I'm not so scattered. Maybe doing a morning episode was a terrible idea. Uh, this is, I hate to tell you guys this. Uh, I'm not a morning person by any means. I'm much more of a uh a, a night owl morning uh, oh there's a key to mandalorians uh the night owls um anyway i'm not much of a morning person you can tell i'm a little scatterbrained i'm drinking coffee with uh my really cool mug that i got from boston um but yeah i uh i'm just not i'm just uh i'm just not super impressed with the mandalorian even if it was this was a nighttime episode or an evening episode i don't know if i'd have a whole lot more to say about it other than a few things um what we have noticed over the past and i'll just bring out the the big elephants in the room a lot of cameos a lot of cool cameos um uh the episode before the last one that just came out had uh tim meadows the comedian snl that guy he was in it just randomly pretty cool they brought um an old character back from rebels which i didn't watch rebels my wife did loves rebels this is the soka thing that that whole series that we got from celebration i'll talk about celebration in a minute <clears throat> but that whole thing uh she really she really digs so it was cool seeing i like how Filoni's bringing in some people from rebels and clone wars um but the cameos i think i kind of figured it out a lot of people were complaining about the cameos one one observation i heard was uh with the cameo of of lizzo and jack black was that whole scene kind of felt like an snl skit and uh after i heard him say that i was like oh man that's pretty spot on um it did kill it felt goofy 
it felt kind of goofy. And I, I, I like Jack Black. I don't really, Lizzo's not really even in my sphere of reference. Um, other than I know she's a pop singer star. Um, and then yeah, Christopher Lloyd was really cool. Kind of, kind of weird. They gave him that part. I know he's just like, well, I'm just only here from one episode. I feel like he could have done better with him. Or maybe he's just getting old. I don't know. I don't. I don't know what the deal is with that. It would have been cool if you're gonna go goofy. At least bring uh, Michael J. Fox in with Christopher Lloyd. Like now, that would have been that would have blown the internet up more than Jack Black and Lizzo. If you would have just brought them in, that would have been really cool. Um, but what I think, and I'll tell you the scoop. Why I think they're doing this. It seems as though, and this goes back to uh, one other character that they brought in recently. <coughs> it seems as though they're really trying to reach um a, a, a broader audience you're gonna get the star wars fans already and there's already a huge audience for star wars fans especially when they're retconning like the the this the sequel era the the last trilogy um dave filoni and john favreau the guys running this are, are really doing a good job kind of building up for that first order and ray and all that stuff which we heard race coming back they're going to do a movie and they're going to go further on uh outside the timeline which is really cool i'm, I'm okay with that i really feel comfortable with them being in charge because they're they're doing a great job of making it a little bit more making the story more in depth kind of cohesive bringing it all together being like palpatine is just cloning people what does this have to do and then you find out that that's actually part of baby yoda's thing is is they were trying to get um midi chlorians and, and blood types from him to help clones because they're trying to clone palpatine so they're really pulling and retconning all this stuff and bringing it right back in to making it coherent but then you bring in cameos like these pop stars and these people that people are very familiar with that are, are are younger and so what i think they're doing is i think they're marveling it up a little bit and they're trying to reach the next audience maybe um by doing things like this and the thing that seems to irritate star wars fans the most is is this kind of feel like sleight of hand tricks um kind of like kind of like you you set the story aside just to kind of bring people in just hopefully it pulls an audience and because of that the story suffered and um and these things are a bit, and this is where I'm going with this. I've started to notice that um, we, this is going to be, this is actually going to be a sweeping broad general statement that I could, I could rant on for hours, but um, there's a lot of things in Star Wars that Star Wars fans have been around for that find very sacred. Um, they're, they're very sacred. Like they're set apart. These are, do not touch these toys because these mean something to us because they're attached to our childhood. They're attached to memories. They're attached to a better time. Maybe they're attached to things that are very important to people. Um, and I think they're actually even more sacred because, and this is going to be, you can just note this one down and maybe I'll bring it up later. It's because I think we live in a world that lacks sacredness. I think, I think on the decline of religion and the decline in, in cultural standpoints and, the cohesiveness of society, the things that we actually hold dear are starting to fall apart and be lost to the wayside. Um, and I think because of that, people are starting to lean into things of their childhood, things of uh, past stories, almost almost kind of biblical stories like Star Wars. Like these, these, things are, these things are ours. Please do not break our toys. Like these things are sacred to us. These are, our, I almost, I hate to say idols. They're, they feel very special. And when, when people start to, tiptoe and start playing around and make an snl episode uh like we just kind of feel like we just kind of had with the the lizzo and the jack black thing it kind of breaks that sacredness for us and it feels very offensive um not because they did anything wrong just it almost should be if it does if it kind of hurts you a little bit it should be a little bit should actually not you shouldn't go on the internet make a podcast and rant about it and just be like these star wars people are ruining it really you should take a step back and go what what do i really hold sacred in my life and obviously i've got my altar behind me or whatever because these these things i do enjoy these are these are fandoms but i i keep them on a very low pedestal because i have actual sacred things uh, that i i think that really are sacred um that are transcendental they're not just stories i've heard or things that I moved around or I attach memories to that I really think that they're holy and set apart. And I think that kind of keeps me to not get so mad at, um, at everything in the world, especially when it tiptoes and, and steps on the toes of the things that I really enjoy. And I'm going to move into that because we're going to actually talk about that a lot this episode. I'm not going to super go. I don't think I'm going to go long. It's like I said, I'm, I'm still half asleep. I'm not even quite here with you. Um, so we'll find out how this episode goes. So Really, I was like, it's episode 50. Let's go full rant. You guys love my rants. 
and they're always good. They're always good, good times. Um, one of the things that I think is the most notable about the sacredness of, of Star Wars is the first big upset. Hold on a second. Hold, hold on. Can we take a break real quick? If you're listening on the audio, I apologize. Um, we're going to take a little, little side step. I'll get back into this. Because <coughs> I'm drinking coffee right now. And one of the things I thought about with the podcast is people start to listen and get used to the YouTube thing is... um. If you've noticed, every time I have coffee, uh, when I do a podcast with the guests, I uh, drink out of this mug. And if you're listening to audio, I'm pointing to um, a mug I have that's a, here, I'll bring it down. It's a, a commemorative Friday the 13th mug, because Friday the 13th is uh, quite possibly, that whole genre is my favorite horror genre. Um, that that uh, that whole thing is my favorite horror movie series. Um Anyway, so I was like, well, this is always fun to have this muck. Well, I got a new one because me and my wife went to Boston for our anniversary. And of course, um, this is, I'm telling you, I'm, I'm going to do better than Marvel and Star Wars by linking all of this together. Um, it's just, it's, I'm going to Tarantino it a little bit. We're going to come back around. We went to Boston and while we were there, we always do like the site, site stuff. And we go to, you know, the little Italy of Boston, get cannolis, uh, super delicious and then we uh you know take the train around and go to museums we went to the boston tea uh museum where they walk on the ships and they have little things of tea you can throw overboard and they could do a whole theatrical thing where you walk through and you get to participate and they they give you a little actually i have a card right here they give you little cards um so you can participate too so these are i you know, see this um so this was my character and it has a little description um because they do a whole town they reenact that night and so you get to participate and you sit in the thing and they're like every time we say this you can either boo or hiss or say huzzah or hip hip and um it's a really fun time but in the process it's educational so they tell you about that night and it's really the start of the revolutionary war it's really like it leads up to the sound off the shot that I heard across the war and uh, the across the world in lexington that really kicked off the revolutionary war and, and if you go through it you're like well oh, they're really mad about what three percent tax and we're getting close to 40 percent now and everyone's just like that's cool but um in that process uh two things uh i got this cool mug so i'm gonna start hopefully finding cool mugs and then throughout the podcast you might see me with a different new mug um this is the one i got in boston uh, and that kind of just leads into my libertarian ideals anyway but Pretty red, pretty red uh, mug. That's actually an art piece that Ben Franklin used in a pamphlet. Um, I don't think he actually painted it, but people say he did. Um, when he was talking about secession and, and people joining up, I'm, I'm not going to go into the details. You can look that up. It's the join or die um, sketch of the broken up snake. Um, but you, you can go in the history. I'm not going to bore you with that one. But that's it. It's Ben Franklin. It's a piece of art. Kind of goes with everything. Um, so I thought that was a cool mug. So I was like, oh, I'm going to bring that one in. So side note, if you're like, dude, this is great. I don't have a PO box yet. But if you were like, I want to send this guy a mug, maybe I'll, maybe I'll, I'll set something up like that where, you know, people who are fans of the, the, the episode, the podcast, they can be like, oh, maybe I'll get a PO box and you guys can send me cool mugs. Um, and I'll just have like a, a mug collection, maybe even a mug club, I'm just playing. Um, a mug collection of, of different mugs that I drink uh, during the podcast. But anyway. Boston. I also took a picture in front of the museum and my social media post that I actually posted to the podcast Instagram. Um, it was me in front of it and said, who radicalized you? Hashtag taxation is theft. Um, the little American flag. But the whole point of that, the story I'm telling you now is, is uh, when you're on the podcast and you're hearing like interview guests, you're getting to get a, a little bit more of my personality. I don't really get out. I don't have a, much of a social scene. Uh, most people that know me live around me kind of know that I'm I'm a bit of a, a recluse. I used to be a little bit more sociable. I'm just getting the older I get, the more and more I kind of have Homer Simpson it back into bushes. Um, and now I get my social cues from podcasts or whatever. But I don't really get out that much. And um, so if you're listening to this, you're like, oh, this is a good way for you to kind of get to know me. It's a good way for me to promote my my art or whatever projects I'm doing, which I will promote here in a little bit. Um, but it's a cool way to kind of get to know me. And if you listen for a while, you kind of understand my perspective. But what a lot of people don't know is I don't post on social media. Matter of fact, that's one of the reasons why it took me so long to do a video for the podcast is I am not very present on social media. But I've been really working on that recently and trying to kind of keep things uh, categorized. So if you go to my Instagram for my art, it's just my art. 
maybe maybe uh, something different, but most of the time it's our representation. But then the Pardon Will podcast, you can go to Pardon Will podcast on Instagram. It uh, it's starting to. It used to just be like, here's an episode, here's an episode, here's an episode. But now I'm actually starting to participate a little bit more in social media. So I posted that Boston Tea Museum back in October. I posted a picture of me in front of the Ghostbusters firehouse little thing, and I've been trying to work on my social media presence a little bit more, be a little bit more present. So you kind of get a feel of me in the social media aspect as well as as this. So this will actually tie in all the way around. I'm just trying to um, Tarantino it a little bit, feed into that. Um, because on social media, people get f- crazy. And and one of the things that, well, going back to the sacred thing, is a lot of actors, like in Star Wars, or when the sequels came out, a lot of actors like <laughs> had to quit because they were getting so much hate online. Like they were, people, it, it, Star Wars became such a religion that you became an apostate if you mess something up. Even if you were just an actor and you were reading the lines, if, if the if the writers wrote you bad into the story, people came after you. Like you're a real, like that's, you're playing a character that they actually hate. I freaking hate you. You should be off. Like people can't take social media in real life and, and not have them overlap or even acting on, on that front. Like people acting. I remember this back when Obi-Wan came out there. I don't know if it was real or not, but I'm going to assume people were so mad at one of the characters. She was playing a bad guy. I don't know what exactly what they're mad about. Some wasn't participating, but I just remember hearing all about like people hating on her. And then it turned into like, it's a race thing. And because she's black, everyone hates her. And star Wars is <laughs> all star Wars fans look like me. So they're all totally white and racist, whatever that whole thing is. I, and I kept thinking about this, like well, what I get it. Like, I don't like people breaking my toys either, but, I'm not going to hit up the actor and be like, I hate you. I hope you, I hope you burn, you know, like no one. And I don't even know exactly what, what happens there, except for if it goes back to the sacredness thing, people really take this and they overlap with real life. And one of the things that happened, and I thought they retconned this perfectly is back when they did the prequels, is it going to line up with my next, my next thing? There was one character that people vehemently hated. And we all know who it was. It was Jar Jar. It was the most annoying character uh, in the history of all television, movie, TV, cinema. Most annoying character. Misa, whatever. Like, Misa, get out of here. No one liked that guy. It was so awful. Um, and and people, like, hated the actor who played him. And it's CGI, right? So they, they went after the actor. Because there's one picture of the actor. He's got the fake head for them to CGI. And it's just this, this black guy. And he's like an actor. He loves Star Wars. He wants to participate. And apparently, I don't know the real story behind this, but apparently people hated him. They they went after him because they didn't like Jar Jar, like as if he wrote Jar Jar. Um, and I just thought that was the most ridiculous thing. So Mandalorian recently had an episode where, um, if you don't know the story, Grogu Baby Yoda somehow escapes Order 66 in the Jedi Temple, but they never told us how he got out. They just know somehow he got from there where, where the stormtroopers and, and um, Anakin are slaughtering all the younglings and they're just wrecking shop on the Jedi temple. Baby Yoda is around. He somehow gets out, but no one knows how. Well, they finally did that, I think, in episode three. They showed it. But not only did that, they brought the guy who played Jar Jar, the guy who stood in with the, you know, the fake head that they CGI'd over. They brought his actor in and made him a Jedi. And not only that, made him the Jedi that saved Baby Grogu. And it was everyone's... Uh, love for star wars like lit back up and people were like and almost to the point where i was like i don't know who was hating on jar jar the much where this guy felt he's always loved star wars he was upset the fact that they hated him because he played jar jar i just to to kind of kind of seal this story this arc up i think they did a phenomenal job by letting him come back in and be the guy who saves baby grogu he's a jedi he's like a jedi i would say he's a, not a jedi knight uh, I don't think he was a Jedi. He might have been a Jedi Master. He had a green lightsaber. Anyway, they retconned him. They gave him a redemption arc in this this weird fourth wall outside story. And I thought that was amazing. Um, and it also kind of, it should kind of pull people out of being like, maybe we were a little harsh on Jar Jar. And this is what I bring up back to the Lizzo and the Jack Black and the Tim Meadows thing to all the kind of Star Wars people. I get that these things are fun for everybody. Like I enjoy them, 
I also keep them at a certain distance of being like, I, I enjoy them for what they are, for who they're supposed to be for. And one of the things that kind of confused me about Jar Jar is almost if, if no one knew, and this is where I think people get a little weirded out. Um, Star Wars is, there's supposed to be an element that's supposed to be fun. All right, so hear me up. Coming from a guy who paints Spider-Man and stuff like that and has comic book stuff everywhere. Um, I'm fully aware of of the appeal of this stuff for children. Maybe there's a little bit of arrested development and how much I love the comic book stuff and Star Wars, but but I understand like uh, the majority of Star Wars was kind of built for a younger generation. Um, maybe not the first few where it's kind of like teetering into like this is what we can do with cinema. Check it out, and it really caught adults' attention. But you know, as a young kid, I wasn't even alive when Star Wars came out, but. Um, it really should spark the imagination of children. It's, there's a whole thing for children. And sometimes I think people forget that like when they're watching Star Wars, they're like, this wasn't gritty enough. They're not getting into the plot line details. Like, yo, yo, bro, hold on. You know, a whole, like at least 50% of this is supposed to be made for kids, right? Like, I get it that it's a sacred cow that you don't want slaughtered. But it is kind of still made for kids. And I think sometimes I get I get confused about that. But even then, I kind of, I try to look at things from an outside perspective. But the Jar Jar thing, I know you, everyone got mad at Jar Jar because it was like, this character's annoying. Dude, kids loved him. Kids, he was playful. He was goofy. It was a lot of like slapstick comedy, falling over, dropping things. It's for kids, man. Like, it's for kids. And if we can't separate that... um. I don't think that's Star Wars' problem. I think it's the audience. I think I think a lot of times when we get furiated with like they're ruining these things, you kind of have to take a step back and go, hold on a second. Like, how much should this really bother me? Um, there's some underlying implications of when we should stand and be like, hold on a second. And and I'll I'll kind of tip into those, but really it it should we should take it everything with a bit of a grain of salt and some clarity of being like maybe this isn't maybe this isn't always for me maybe it's or maybe it shouldn't be taken that seriously um again i think that comes from <clears throat> i think that comes from uh lack of sacredness uh having things that are holy they're sacred like your family even if you're not religious having your family or you know your your passions or the things that you're you're trying to accomplish in your life having those things set apart like these things are untouched do not mess with these things and then that makes sense that that you know other things that come in um it's not a big deal like if star if they mess star wars up you're not so much concerned about that as long as you know your kids are eating you're paying bills or whatever so with that with that thing i'm going to tie that one into oh i'll tell you about mine hey everybody i don't know if you know this but not only am i a podcaster I'm also an artist, and I'm not a bad one at that. And if you want to judge me, be like, well, I don't think he's a very good artist. You can actually go to pardonwill.etsy.com and check out my art. And I'm going to show it to you right now. If you go here, you can actually see my entire category. And I've got cool stuff like antiques. I got uh, the Mandalorian watercolors. All these things are prints. I also have originals on here. And you can buy those um, that are actually on watercolor, hand-painted. But even with the prints, you can choose. Like, well, I want this size. I, I don't want this size. Um, I want to actually be able to adjust according to the frame that i have for the office or the living room or or my kids bedroom because they love spider-man you can do all of that at pardonwill.com slash etsy and as a gift to you for being a great listener um i'm using promo code podcast it gives you 10 percent off and that's that's literally just me being like hey thanks for listening and and it's just for you no one else knows about that um, unless they listen to the podcast. So that's my gift. And, and you know, a lot of podcasts are like, well, donate and subscribe and all that stuff. And you can do that as well. But um, I don't want free money. I want you to be able to support the podcast and also get something in return. So um, if you go to pardonwill.etsy.com and check out my art, you can just look at it. And sometimes it's just nice to look at art. I mean, people, I mean, what is Instagram for anyway? So go to pardonwill.etsy.com and check it out. And uh, if you like something, use promo code podcast, get 10% off. And that's my gift to you as a listener, because I appreciate you. And so that's it. Uh, and back to the episode. Just if we're being transparent, or I had to take a step back. And, and part of me had to really think about this one. 
So, uh, and because I never talked about this, <clears throat> I wasn't really doing the podcast around this time, but last year when Obi-Wan came out, loved it. People were kind of like, oh, I don't know what they're doing with the, with the kid actor again, Star Wars for kids, little Leia, she's running through the woods slowly. These things, I get it. I get the technicalities. Please don't it's Star Wars back up a little bit. It's just a movie. Um, and then she Hulk came out. Oh, Miss Marvel came out. And I think I mentioned that on the podcast. I was like, look, it's it's for teens, man. Like it's it's cool. It's just not my flavor. It's cool. I pro- I watched it. It's is what it is. I'm not expecting much because it's for teens. It's built, it looks like a teen movie or a show. Um, but it didn't bother me. Uh and and I try to kind of relate that. Like it's this this doesn't bother me. But then She Hulk came out. That one bothered me. Um, not because I'm a misogynist, which I probably am or whatever, but, um, the parts that bothered me <laughs> is because one, they took one sacred cow that I really enjoyed and they stepped all over it. And I, that's when I had to realize like, all right, you got to pull it back. Um, it did kind of throw me off a little bit cause it was, it was such a great buildup. But, um, the other thing was, I guess could be considered sacred was the fourth wall. So I'm going to just talk about she a little bit. And when I started stepping back away from the whole Marvel and, and criticizing these things to a, a high extent, um, she Hulk brought in daredevil by far my favorite, as far as characters go on the screen, my favorite superhero. I have a few others that are up in the line, but daredevil is by far my favorite. I think it has a little bit of the connection with him being Catholic and religious and him being blind and just his powers and the struggle between justice and, and vengeance and, that whole thing. Plus it was dark. The Netflix series was dark and gritty and it was just right up my alley. I mean, it tapped into everything, the gangster stuff, the corruption in the government. Hello, Libertarian. Loved it, dude. Loved every ounce of it. Literally. I I mean, I actually thought about doing a whole episode where I take political parties and political ideologies and break them down in individual Marvel characters. I'm going to actually do that. If you think that's a good idea, just hop on right now and be like, do that episode. I don't know enough about most political parties, but I think I might do it anyway just to make people mad. But that part, they kind of just made him, and she hoped they made him the secondary character and kind of a pushover, kind of, they kind of, I mean, even there was one line where she, she just degrades him. Um, and I'm not going to bring up the line. Maybe I read too much into it. It was just, at first I was like, all right, I get it. I get what they're doing. Yeah, it's good. It's it's revolving around, and I actually love the actor that plays she Hulk. She's in Parks and Rec, and, I thought she did a great job as She-Hulk. I thought the writers botched it completely. The whole last episode with breaking that fourth... I mean, I get breaking the fourth wall. Uh, you know, uh, Deadpool style was great. They, I mean, they didn't break the fourth wall. They just tore down the entire concept. I don't even know if it's supposed to be in another universe. They, they really destroyed with going outside, going to Marvel Studios, meeting an AI robot named Kevin Feige or whatever... And then, and then the whole ending just maybe it was just like, well, I can just change the ending because I can rewrite it. And it's like the whole climax of the fight was just wiped away, like ripping a page out of a script. Brutally horrible. I, I know maybe they're trying to go with like a, a Sex in the City mixed with Law and Order kind of feel. Didn't read much of the Sheol comics, so I get I I caught a little bit of that, but that that bugged me. The stepping on the the um the Daredevil. This is just me being transparent. Stepping on Daredevil, one of my favorite favorite characters and doing him that way really set me off not set me off just kind of bummed me out almost maybe not even want to look forward to the new daredevil series coming out which you keep hearing about it kind of just destroyed it matter of fact it kind of put a taint on all other marvel stuff because uh i I, maybe i'm analytical but every time a new marvel thing came out after that even multiverse of madness i'm not actually came out before i don't remember which what's come out since It just kind of made it was like, well, they can just rip the script out at any time. What's the point of Marvel anymore? They really kind of destroyed it. Um, and that's when I had to step back and go, this Marvel may have been a sacred cow for me just because it's so much fun. I've got so much invested. I really felt it when Tony said, I am Iron Man snapped and then died as a sacrifice. Like, here's a hero that we rode with for a while. We get to see these stories play out. And I'm not saying that's bad. A lot of people have favorite characters in books they read. And when you get to the end of the book, there's something painful there because you just want the story to continue. And you, when you are with these, like I'm a big storyteller. I love to write. I understand the idea of passion, bringing characters in, getting you to see yourself in them a little bit, seeing something uh, in them that you want to see in you, um, building a, a, a tie in relationships. That way, when a character dies in a story, you feel it. People cry. That's the whole point of you crying at movies is you start to feel invested and involved. 
And that's kind of how Marvel really was building up. And then this last phase, it's just kind of, they, they took all that, like that good book. And then they're like, let's just have fun with it. And I don't know if it's to, to bring in other people to kind of maybe reset the game and have you start to build up more characters. But that She-Hulk series really, really, really messed with my any intent of taking Marvel seriously from here on out. One of the reasons why I've struggled with doing like pop art reviews is because I'm just like, at any point in time, they should rip the script out like they did. And so uh, I bought it up against that. Again, I had to take She-Hulk, turn it back on me and reflect, go, how, how seriously am I taking this? I don't think it's bad taking these things somewhat seriously and getting invested in these characters. Matter of fact, I encourage people to, because, you know, a lot of times I, 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 I use characters like that, you know, in in a reflection of myself in, in a reflection of myself and try to see those things and i think it's good to have characters that are fictional that you tie i have no problems with that but i do think it's weird that they they botched her um i think they botched she hulk in general um not just daredevil not just and not just the whole Daredevil. i think they could have done better with that character but anyway let's move on we've covered a ton so back to that whole ripping the thing out sacred cows she Hulk, Miss Marvel, the teenager, keeping things at arm's length, keeping that away, not getting too invested. Let's go back to social media. <clears throat> well, I'm gonna take a sip of coffee out of my, my cool joiner die mug. Let's talk about social media real quick. I don't know how long I'm gonna go on this, but <clears throat> I've always struggled with doing, I've said this, oh my god, how many times now? Struggle with participating on social media other than just putting out my art out there. Because really, all I've looked at social media was an avenue to be able to uh, put all my hot, like if I'm pa really painting or podcasting, this is just so I can get my content out there. Because I mean, initially, I'd like to make more content. And the best way to make more content is more people see it, more people like it, more people buy it, more people watch, like and subscribe. Go ahead and like and subscribe. Um, that helps encourage me to keep doing those things. The thing that I thought was the least interesting about me is my political views, or my personal views, or my religious views. I don't really think people cared that much about me. So when they say like, uh, you know, the people that know me, that interact with me, uh, my friends, stuff like that, they care. But I assume the majority of people could care less. I mean, there's a, some little bit like the painting behind me. A lot of my paintings have scriptural references at the bottom to kind of give you a feel where I'm getting the idea from. That's never bothered any of my atheist friends. Matter of fact, I've had atheist people buy my art knowing that was both off scripture. They just did it because they liked it. And so I was like, well, my best part is, is putting out content for people to enjoy to kind of maybe inspire them. But what I've done, and I think I got this from being in ministry for so long, is I've kept all my personal views on certain things like cultural things close to the chest <clears throat> and not really put them out there. Because, again, there's a business aspect to that as well, which we kind of saw uh, rear its ugly head this, this past week. Oh, happy belated Easter, by the way. I don't even know if I mentioned that at the beginning. Um, there's a, there's a, I, and I've talked to a friend of mine recently about this because he has a small business and he does the stuff. And I was like, how often do you put your political stuff out there with your business? Because what you want to do as a business is at least be as neutral as possible. It's hard when you're ma making, you know, paintings, you know, in reference with the scripture at the bottom, to kind of get a feel for them. If you listen to my podcast, you can be an atheist and enjoy it. You can be, you know, a Democrat and enjoy, you can be a Republican, you can, you can be whatever you want and still enjoy because it's a bit of a neutral setting. And I did that on purpose because I want it to reach a large audience, kind of like Star Wars, Miss Marvel, Jar Jar, all that stuff. It's kind of reach a bigger audience as much as possible. But the one thing it does lack is it does lack a bit of a substance of getting to know me a little bit more. That's why the podcast is a bit of an avenue because the more you listen, the more you're like, oh, I see where this guy is. I kind of get to understand where his perspective is. You're not going to get that on my social media until maybe here recently. And I think if you follow me on Twitter, you know I'm a little bit more uh, politically and culturally involved on Twitter, only because I'm trying Twitter out. I've had Twitter for a long time. I think I talked to Travis about this on the last podcast. But here recently, I've been using it a little bit more because I've been engaged with the cultural war a little bit more. Matter of fact, my podcast might start to reflect that. I doubt my art will. Um, but some part of me is really concerned uh, and, and the idea of neutrality when it comes to business kind of went out the window. Because if you haven't heard, Bud Light came out with a very prominent influencer who was uh, transitioned from being a man into a woman somehow. Um, that whole thing happened, and uh, they put his face on the can. I think they did it just as a celebration. I don't, I don't even know why they did it, but most people were like, 
Bud Light. Like Bud Light is promoting a TikTok transgender influencer. Who do they think they're selling beers to? And a lot of people were like, when the company, and we've seen this over the past years, the culture war, and this is where I was like, the, keep sacred things, you know, don't take social media so seriously. The most stuff you see on Facebook, Twitter, and Instagram, <coughs> that's fighting back and forth. It's not real life. It's not really happening. And I used to say that all the time. It's like, these are this is a small fringe. Uh, squeaky wheel gets the most grease. This is where people are drawn to. The algorithms kind of create this fight and this invite. <clears throat> I'm starting to re rethink that idea. And I don't know if it's because some people are online so much and you have podcasts. You have some. I'm starting to think that, that that whole internet world, that whole cesspool of debauchery and hateful, it's bleeding all the way into everything else. And I say that when it comes to like the, I would have never thought Bud Light would have been like, put that on a can, see how it does. It'll do good. And I've always kept on the neutral side again. Like I'm, I'm pretty neutral when it comes to my art, my podcast, anything that I do in my poetry. It's all pretty fairly neutral. And, uh, and that's when I've started to think, well, maybe, maybe being neutral isn't always the best. Maybe you start to, you lose something in that neutrality. Not that I'm going to go full on out on the podcast and, and, you know, endorse a political candidate. I mean, I probably will, but nothing crazy like that. I'm not going to spew hatred. I'm not going to go Alex Jones or turn the, the frogs gay on you guys. Um, but I probably might be a little bit more on the podcast where I'm starting to put more on my social media, like, hey, here's Boston. I might actually start participating on that front a little bit more the way I am on Twitter um, and start to kind of put that out there. Because the only thing I think is the only the only benefit, not because I don't think it's going to make maybe it makes the podcast bigger. Maybe more people want to listen if you start to kind of pick a side or or at least stay your ground in certain things. Um, and I think if you listen to the podcast, you know, we're where the hills that I die on are. But if you don't, you don't really see that in social media. So I had a, a chat with a friend um, who's in ministry this week and I asked him about what he thought about. Like, and he's pretty neutral because he's in ministry and he's, is not quick to, uh, you want to try to offend anybody by any means, but I mean, it's also kind of easily at first you would have think, well, he's, you know, he works in ministry. Obviously we know where he stands. Not so much anymore. I mean, not so much you you can say someone's a christian and doesn't say anything anymore because you have christians out there who are pagans at the same time or christians out there who who believe the god's non-binary which i've heard that argument's pretty pretty ridiculous but regardless like you can you can be a christian and have whatever beliefs you want now none of it means anything and and we live in such a chaotic world that bud light's putting that on a transgender influencer on a can that guy's going to the white house drag shows for kids i don't know if you've been paying attention war in ukraine everything is going nuts the banks are collapsing the whole world is going and you don't really know anybody anymore is what my point is and so um i talked to him and i was like how do you feel about if i was, what do you think if would this hurt the podcast would it hurt my art and uh he doesn't seem to think so he doesn't seem to think that if I if I started taking a little bit more of a harsher stand on certain things, if I might alienate people, is really where it comes down to. You don't want to alienate people, um, but when you start to become alienated, and then you don't want to catch people off guard either. I would hate for someone to listen to this podcast for like if if you've been listening to this podcast for like six months, and I was like, hey, in the middle of it, you know, you know, with my Christian beliefs and people pull back, this guy believe, believes in Jesus then I might have done something wrong in that process. And so, I don't know. Those are my thoughts um, involving all of all of the woke stuff that we're dealing with culture. It's starting to bleed into everything. And I'm having, I'm actually personally having second guesses on what is, <clears throat> what is a good standpoint in this culture war. I actually had thought about that. I talked to Travis about that, my last guest, about how much do I take the podcast in the culture war thing? Because I, I think it's a serious thing. And, the, and I might do a whole separate, I'm running on uh, close to 40 minutes. I wasn't planning on going for an hour on this one, but one of the reasons, and I'll, I'll end it with this. I'll tell you the reason why I think this is important. And I, I'm, I'm very hesitant because I don't want to get caught up in some just weird hysteria where everything, everything's drag queens, everything's going to burn in hell. We're falling apart. But to be honest with you, a lot of, a lot of reality is collapsing. 
and and like what we know up and down left and right and then here's here's well i'll end this episode and this is why i think it's not something to just take a grain of salt with it's something to kind of peek your eye at because it's getting weird out there if you're paying attention not obviously i probably spend too much time on twitter but it's starting to bleed over into everything like everywhere you go it, and it's just starting to bleed everywhere so here's what i'll say why this kind of was a little predictable there's this guy, Frederick Nietzsche. I don't know if I've talked about this on the podcast. <clears throat> this guy, Frederick Nietzsche. This goes back to the Watch me full circle this. <clears throat> he uh, he wrote a, a bunch of books. He's a staunch philosopher and atheist. And he wrote this poem because I'm a poetry guy. I love poems. So I'm not going to quote. I don't have the poem with me, so I can't quote it for verbatim. But it's called the... Oh, my gosh. I can't even remember what, what the poem was. The poem of the madman. Something like that. Poem of the Madman. You can Google Nietzsche if you can spell Nietzsche right. Poem of the Poem of the the Madman. But it's a story of this this guy, and it's a reflection of the culture of his time because he was a philosopher. And the existential thing, postmodernism, is starting to take root, where things are more inclined to science than they are with spirituality, and and religion, religiosity, and sacredness are starting to fall away. And so he writes this poem with this with this madman, this crazy man who runs into a church, has a lantern lit during the day. And people are like, this guy's crazy. Why does he have a lantern lit during the day? He runs in the church and he throws it on the ground. And he basically shouts, this get God is dead and we have killed him. He is dead. This is this church is no longer a church of celebration. It is a tomb. And he runs out. And this relates to, and this is why I brought up the Easter thing. Happy Easter, everybody. So he says, God is dead. And in that process, he goes and he goes out into the town and he starts to tell everybody. And they're like, this guy's nuts. So what is he talking about? And he starts to basically predict the future. And he even says this at the end of the poem. He goes, I've come too soon. You guys have been not clued in on this. But this madman starts screaming and telling everybody, he goes, God is dead and we've killed him. The blood of God is on our hands. He goes, but because we've done this, we no longer know what's up and down, where the horizon begins and where it ends. Because we can't, we've took a sponge and wiped away the line of the horizon to where the sky and the earth have all blend together. There is no distinction between truth or false or right and wrong. There is there is no directional, there is no compass anymore. We have we don't know whether we are upside down or right side up because God was the only thing of that line between false truth and, 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 and reality and falsehood and lies. He was the line that we had. He goes, but because we've done this and that it's already been done, what we have to do now is create our own games. We have to define truth and reality by our own terms. We have to become gods like the one we just killed. And we have to decide where the horizon is. And I say this because this is exactly from that moment, that postmodern ideal where, where truth is no longer transcendent. It's, it's no longer something outside of us that we interact with. It's something that we hold and we decide. It goes back to the garden. You know, did God really say that? Because in choosing the fruit of the tree and knowledge and good and evil, in that process, Adam and Eve were deciding what is actually right and what is false. And it goes all the way from Genesis back to Nietzsche. We live in an era today where and I, right and wrong morality, it's, it's, it's whatever we decide it to be. You know, boy, girl, male, female, what is a woman? All this it was predictable from the, the beginning of the idea that anything truth that was transcendent outside of us, a reality that exists beyond us, if we were wiped away, the gravity would still exist. That whole thing is false now. Everything's a social construct because it wasn't there until we created it. You see what I'm saying here? So this is why at first I was like, let's not get riled up with the whole culture war thing. Let's not participate. Let the kids play in the sand. It's It's just a small sect of people. I didn't think about it that much, but it's not. And and we've we're, not to sound crazy, Alex Jones, but we we've moved into a post postmodernist world, to where now there is no. I mean, you can have an easily conversation with somebody and be like, "Well, do you think morality is the standpoint, and we're trying to figure it out, or do you think we decide?" No, we decide it. It's morality <coughs> is a social construct, and I can go on and on um, about this for days. And I've done it with atheists. I'm like, you really think so? And they're like, yeah, yeah, no, it's, it's because society, we figured out what is right and wrong and how to socially can he, can he exist together. That's why things aren't transcendent. We, and I've asked them, like, do you think it's, I mean, I don't need to go into that, but basically, do you think, do you think there's, it, 
it's it's right because it helps the group or is it right because it's just is right in in the ether and and the basic standpoint is no it helps the group maybe maybe it's both but it, it's only justified by the group not because there is a god because because to them god is dead uh i'll end this with and he is risen <laughs> how about that but uh happy easter everybody happy bladed easter hope you have a wonderful week um there's my what <laughs> we went from mandalorian to marvel to jesus rise from the dead to frederick nietzsche and, and killing god and all that in one podcast episode and it was all full circle with sacred cows all the all the sacredness we've lost sacrednessity and uh we're we're spinning out of control and and in, in a world where we can't tell what is right and what is wrong it's all tied together i am really good at this it's almost as if i'm a writer and i think ahead Anyway, appreciate you guys tuning in. I'm not going to do any ad reads. Uh, you guys know where to find me. Pardon art. If you want to check out my, the debauchery I get on Twitter and the um, the arguments I get on, you can actually, I'll, I'll open that up to you. It's pardon will art on Twitter. Super easy. It's a fun time. I just like the memes for the most part. I'm not getting crazy on there. Um, if you want to follow me, pardon will pod on Instagram. Pardon will art is my art on Instagram. And all that other stuff. Got a few things coming down the line. Redoing the website. Might actually make a Facebook page. Got some stuff I'm thinking about. More art. Oh, check this out. I'm going to start. So I had a buddy of mine take a look at the Etsy. Real quick before we end it. And he was like, dude, you know all your best sellers on your Etsy? All your art. Or all your antique stuff. So I haven't really done a lot of the antique things. I've done a few recently. But this kind of stuff. And I just finished this one for a commission for a friend. But this kind of stuff. This antique burned art. And he's like, you know those are that's your best sellers and i was like you know i didn't think about that but they probably yeah that makes sense so i'm probably going to start doing a lot more of those so if you have a suggestion i put this out on facebook and i've been kind of paying attention to people commenting if you have something that you're like this would look cool with like antique antique journal like it basically the thought is all this art looks like if you found a journal that was in a fire and you opened it up and it's like a traveler writing down things that he saw and descriptions what they're called and what they look like and how they functioned um, all your favorite Marvel stuff, your Star Wars, all that sacred cow stuff slammed into one. And then I take them as art pieces, burn the edges. Kind of make like you found a journal, an old journal, and those burned up. And you can hang those pictures in the wall. Anyway, going to do more of those. So if you have any more comments about that, email me. Go on anything. And even this YouTube, be like, hey, I'd like to see Han Solo's blaster antique style, which I'm probably going to do because I thought about that yesterday. Anyway, thanks for tuning in. Hope this was fun. And hope you follow me on all the socials and you like and subscribe because world's world's getting crazy and it's only going to get crazier. So I'll be right here along with you. All right. Bye, guys. Bye.